Welcome back friends. Another session from Shomu's Biology. And in this video, we'll be talking about shuttle vectors. And what are shuttle vectors? Why we use shuttle vectors in molecular biology? Now, uh, we've talked about vectors. I assume that you have the basic idea of vectors. Vectors are gene carrying vehicles. In the molecular cloning approaches, uh, the idea is we need, we have a target DNA and we need to insert that target DNA into a host cell. That can be a bacteria or a yeast or could be something else. Now mainly we have either bacteria or yeast as a host cell. Now in that case, we need to take the target DNA inside the host cell. And the target DNA is a fragment portion of the DNA. It cannot enter itself inside the host cell. So we need a vehicle, a system with which we can deliver it inside the host cell. That vehicle is called as the vector. Now that is called the gene vector or genetic vector because the vector is a self-replicating molecule. Most often it's a plasmid. Now in case of shuttle vector, we are also talking about a plasmid, right? Plasmid is a circular self-replicatory genetic element of bacteria. So the idea here is normally in different bacteria we have plasmids available because you know bacteria have their bacterial chromosome alongside uh, it has a circular DNA that is known as the plasmid. Now what we can do we can take this plasmid out and we redesign this plasmid in such a way that we can treat it as a carrying vehicle where we cut a small portion of it and then we attach our target gene with this and that can act as a recombinant DNA molecule because two, two different set of DNA is recombined together, reattached together. And then we take this vector, this recombinant vector inside the host cell. The host is either, I told you, either it could be a bacteria cell or it could be yeast cell. Okay. And we put it inside either of this. So this is for the normal uh, type of uh, vectors. Vectors can be of different type like plasmids or many different varieties. But for now we focus on plasmid. But uh, either it could be inserted into a bacteria as a host or inside a yeast as a host. Now the type of vectors are varied from for, for this different purpose. Now we realize that we can make, if we can make a vector that can be expressed or inserted inside a bacteria and the yeast it does not matter we can insert it inside a bacteria or we can insert it inside yeast the same vector the vector will be the same we can use it for the experiments uh, expressing in the bacterial cell also experiments expressing in the eukaryotic cell that is yeast that could be very good because we can taste all the genes like prokaryotes and eukaryotic genes and their expressions using the same vector and that is the idea behind shuttle vector because the term shuttle means here we construct this vector keeping in mind that the vector should express itself the vector should deliver a gene itself inside both two different types of the host cell both one is a bacteria another one is the yeast so it has the capability of inserting the gene and expressing it in both of them so for that reason we need to put some more element in a shuttle vector compared with the other types of vector like the common bacterial vector or yeast vectors okay so if we look at here uh, how it looks like uh, this this vector construction like any other vector it should have the three important stuff one is called the origin of replication uh, obviously multiple cloning side where we cut the vector and join the target dna and obviously a selectable marker with which we select which host cell actually get our vector inside it okay so these three things are present but along with that they have multiple uh, varieties because you know we have two host cell to look for so the idea here is we have two origin of replication instead of one because the origin of replication is working in bacteria will not work in the yeast so we need to put a different origin of replication for the replication inside the yeast cell if it is used for the uh, in case of yeast. So in that case, if we begin with it, in both the side I can write origin of replication for the bacteria for the yeast. Okay. Second thing is the selectable marker. Now again the selectable marker is a specific gene sequence which we 
the product of which can help us to identify where exactly our plasmid is present. So if you see here, this is a selectable marker. But again, for the selectable marker for bacteria will be different than the selectable marker for the yeast. So we have a pair of origin of replication, one for bacteria, one for yeast. A pair of selectable marker, one for bacteria, one for yeast. Now alongside we should have what? Multiple cloning site and that thing is common because it's, it does not matter where exactly you put the DNA here. So we have a multiple cloning sequence or multiple cloning site there. That is common for all because th there will be different restriction enzyme sequences where we can treat the enzyme and cleave it and attach the target DNA and we can do the rest of the process. So this is a basic construct but along with that it should have a centromeric sequence for yeast because you know for the expression of genes inside the yeast it requires the centromere sequences it requires the autonomous replicator sequence or ARS so these are the sequences that that is very necessary for the expression of a gene or for insertion or replication of a gene inside the yeast cell because yeast cell is obviously a eukaryotic cell so it is slightly more difficult to handle compared with the bacterial cell so here we should also have the centromeric region east centromere should be present so this in a sense uh, it's how it looks like i mean uh, the mcs and origin of replication selectable marker and uh, east centromeric cell so uh, centromere so in all this part if you look uh, it will be constructed and this type of usually we use plasmid to construct this vector and you see that this plasmid is slightly bigger in size because it has multiple things uh, compared with the general plasmid vector which is very very small and it has a, a slightly more capacity of for the cloning because uh, the target DNA that should be inserted uh, can be slightly bigger compared with the capacity of a uh, general plasmid vector. So that is in a sense is the shuttle vector and we can use it for the expression purpose, we can use it for the cloning purpose in both the host with on only one vector. So if you have this, you don't need to worry about, you can still easily do this for a bacteria, we can also do this for a yeast or eukaryotes. So that's it guys, uh, I think this video helps you. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and definitely subscribe, here's the button, okay? And please, subscribe you have watched a lot of videos and not subscribe is not a good thing so please subscribe here i'm not moving if you don't subscribe okay please subscribe i'm not going really until you hit the subscribe button hopefully you did thank you